Rivian is one of the hottest automotive startups in the EV space with exciting new products that have begun shipping to customers. The company is based in California and run by its founder, RJ Scaringe, who started the company in 2009. But as of October 2021, they were the first to bring a production electric vehicle pickup truck to market just a month before the company's initial public offering allowed them to raise an astounding $13.5 billion. Rivian also has the backing of large automotive and tech giants including Ford and Amazon and is preparing to shake up the auto industry. In its first week of trading as a public company back in November 2021, Rivian soared 130% and received an insane $150 billion valuation, far exceeding the size of even GM or Ford, despite selling just a handful of EVs. Investors were giving this market darling a seemingly Tesla-esque valuation, hoping that the company would follow the same trajectory. But even Tesla's metrics were more down to earth. Comparing Rivian's fourth quarter 2021 results with a more apples to apples Tesla from its third quarter in 2012, a time when they had just begun delivering the Model S, both Tesla and today's Rivian would both be making a similar $50 million in revenue. Typically, when deliveries begin, a company's fixed factory costs start to come into play as they are divided by the useful life of the factory and are expensed over time through the income statement. This led Rivian's gross margins to be down over 700% as each truck they produced cost multiple times more than the amount they sold it for. While this is common when a factory just starts up with low volume, Tesla only saw a negative 17% gross margin, highlighting their more efficient capital management at the time, being in the same position that Rivian is today. Tesla recognized a $111 million loss at the time, but Rivian blew that out of the water with a $2.4 billion loss. While this seems absurd, given that Tesla as a company was only worth about $2.5 billion back in 2012, Rivian was valued at $43 billion when this quarter was announced, about 17 times more than Tesla, which was also considered highly overvalued at the time. Now that said, Rivian does have an unbelievable $18 billion of cash on its balance sheet, which is actually more cash than Tesla has today. This allows the company to take massive losses and invest aggressively in multiple areas to try to catch up to Tesla. Back in 2012, Tesla only had $109 million of cash and shortly after raised another $222 million to fund its operations. Tesla didn't have $2.4 billion to lose. This smaller amount of flexibility meant that Tesla needed to be more prudent with their spending. Now Rivian has seen a steady decline in its share price since its IPO highs, and today it resides closer to $50 billion in value keeping in mind that 40% of the company is basically cash. CEO RJ Scaringe owns just 2% of the company and has seen his wealth rise and fall. However, Rivian has a dual-class voting structure where Scaringe owns 100% of the company's Class B shares that each have 10 times the voting power. He is able to highly influence corporate decisions despite not having as much skin in the game. This could be beneficial in terms of giving the founder control of the company to execute on their vision, but could also be detrimental if poor decisions are made to no consequences. Now, to be fair, while Tesla's Elon Musk owns over 20% of the company's share and there is no dual-class voting structure at Tesla, Elon did have millions of dollars from his sale of PayPal that he poured into Tesla. Rivian, instead, has had to raise most of its capital from outside investors. Now the landscape has changed over the last 10 years with the rise of Tesla, which has made it much easier to raise capital as investors attempt to seek out subsequent automotive winners. There was also far less competition when Tesla was just starting out, but today, Rivian needs to deal with other US automakers releasing their own electric trucks and none other than Tesla itself, engineering their unique Cybertruck offering. The pickup truck market is the most lucrative in the United States and is dominated by Ford's F-Series lineup, including the top-selling F-150, followed by General Motors with vehicles such as the Chevy Silverado that's leading the way for GM. While none of these vehicles are electric, Ford's F-150 Lightning is making its debut in 2022, and GM has released the Hummer EV while planning for an electric Silverado modeled after their best-selling pickup. 
Rivian is a newcomer to the space with three products, the R1T electric truck, the R1S, an SUV built off the same platform, and they also sell an electric delivery van which they jointly designed and engineered in collaboration with Amazon that's exclusive to Amazon. That said, Rivian has already had to delay its pickup truck multiple times. Production for the R1T and R1S were originally targeted for 2020, but due to global chip and part shortages, the pickup truck hit the market at the end of 2021, still beating out competitors to the punch. However, electric pickup trucks are one of the most difficult vehicles to mass produce given that the battery packs are much larger than those of smaller sized cars. Batteries are in short supply worldwide and Rivian competitor Tesla has signed deals with all of the major battery producers. Since Tesla was the pioneer of the industry and got in early, they have been soaking up the entire industry's capacity and then some, thinking of how they can satisfy their insane hunger for batteries and materials. This means new battery factories that take multiple years to build will need to be constructed by Rivian and other players in order to meet their own demand. Currently, Rivian's capacity is low enough that this hasn't affected them yet, but if investors believe that Rivian can expand at the same rate as Tesla, then Rivian will need to get its supply chain ramped up and grounded in stability. Rivian does have some big advantages over where Tesla was at this time. For one thing, at least there are EV supply chains that exist, which wasn't exactly the case when Tesla was getting started. Rivian can also copy what Tesla has done, and they plan to do exactly that. Currently, Rivian outsources all of its motors, but they are working on a dual and quad motor drive unit in-house. They are also developing a heat pump based thermal system and new battery packs including both high nickel and iron based variants. In addition, they plan to add energy products and are also building out their own charging network. And they also need to write their own software to complement the user experience. Every single one of these things mentioned is exactly what Tesla is already doing. Rivian appears to be trying to make the company look as close to Tesla as possible, but this wasn't the original vision of the firm. While Tesla is essentially saying no to everything this year, stating that they won't be releasing new products, but instead are focusing on scaling, Rivian is doing the opposite, saying yes to everything and entering at least 10 different market segments at once, which each come with their own surprises. Now while Rivian needs to write its own software from scratch to secure its connected vehicles, Luckily, you don't have to in order to protect your data and browse the internet securely. That's why today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN encrypts your online traffic and hides your IP address to protect your privacy. They have over 5400 servers worldwide in order to achieve a reliable and an unbeatable coverage experience regardless of where you're located. Now I'm particularly impressed with NordVPN's new built-in feature called Threat Protection which boosts security even if you're not connected to a VPN server at the time. Threat Protection adds next level safeguards by scanning websites and files for threats. If you accidentally click on the wrong link, it will automatically block malicious websites, trackers and malware before they can cause damage to your computer. And so for an extremely low cost and even lower with this special deal, get a 2 year plan plus 1 month free with an additional huge discount. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Just go to nordvpn.com slash tmiotesla and use our code tmiotesla at checkout. Also, one of my favorite features of NordVPN is that you can select whichever country you want to browse the internet from. So if you're traveling in another country or you're at home and want to access a streaming service only available in another geography, you can simply select your country of choice and NordVPN will cloak your virtual location and make your computer appear as though it's in that country. Therefore, they essentially give you access to the global internet and make it a piece of cake to change your IP address. So head on over to nordvpn.com slash tmiotesla and use our special promo code tmiotesla to get a two-year plan plus one month free with a massive discount. See the link in the description below. Now, Rivian CEO RJ Scaringe originally set out to build adventure vehicles. The company says, Rivian is on a mission to keep the world adventurous forever. We believe there is a more responsible way to explore the world and are determined to make the transition to sustainable transportation an exciting one. We designed our emissions-free electric adventure vehicles to challenge what's possible. Now this mission statement is actually quite long-winded and vague and seems to try to be centered around adventure vehicles 
Yet by copying Tesla, Rivian seems to have deviated away from its original mission. They're up against Tesla's mission, which is simply to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. It may seem like it's not important, but Tesla's mission is clear cut and everyone knows it off by heart. It actually provides clear guidance and motivation to each employee for what they need to work on, which is pushing in the direction of sustainable energy, even if no one is there to tell them. This aspirationally large and urgent goal has allowed Tesla to make better and better cars in order to beat ICE vehicles and bring energy storage and solar products to market and to move as fast as possible. Rivian's mission is around adventure and making the transition to sustainable energy exciting, yet they want to make battery storage products and are aiming to hit yearly unit targets. This seems to be more to appease investors rather than to focus on the actual mission and it confuses customers and employees. But not only that, it starts to spread the company thin since the focus is everywhere. There are so many things going on at Rivian at the same time that it almost appears to be out of control, which makes the $2.4 billion loss in a single quarter begin to make a lot of sense. They are also beholden to Amazon, which placed an order for 100,000 electric delivery vans, with the first 10,000 that are expected to be delivered this year in 2022. Again, Rivian originally planned to release only its pickup truck and similarly styled SUV, but by accepting a $700 million investment from Amazon, they have reduced their focus on adventure and shifted it towards their largest shareholder, Amazon, which now owns 20% of the company and wants their vans delivered. This is great for Rivian and for Amazon. Rivian has years worth of business from a real customer with a great name to back them up, but they have reduced their flexibility and their resources are now split between multiple projects and an electric delivery van has nothing to do with their adventure-driven mission and challenging what's possible. The company actually started delivering all three of its products in 2021, which may be one of the reasons why the company missed its production targets for last year by 15% only producing 1,015 cars. The company states, we believe our multi-program product development capability will enable us to expand our portfolio and addressable market with exceptionally designed and capable electric vehicles and an end-to-end -end value added software and service offering. Investors might like this, but it sounds like they have a lot on their plate. Now, while Rivian has raised more money than Tesla's entire 2012 valuation by a factor of five times, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has stated that capital isn't the limiting factor, it's talent. At the same time, Tesla has actually sued Rivian for allegedly stealing trade secrets and poaching employees. We've also seen some high-profile executive departures from Rivian, which are fairly common, especially in intense industries such as this. However, one strange exit was Rivian's chief operating officer, who appeared to have abruptly retired at the end of 2021, just as Rivian was starting its production ramp. A Rivian spokesperson stated in January 2022 that the COO began his phased retirement several months prior. This is also strange because the company IPO'd one month after starting production, and so this could be something that the company didn't seem to think was important to disclose prior to bringing Rivian to the public markets. Now, another odd thing about Rivian is that their headquarters is in Irvine, California, but their manufacturing plant is on the other side of the country in normal Illinois. This is a plant they purchased from Mitsubishi Motors that was said to be production ready. And they're already opening a second site, which is just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, also far away from its other locations. But why are they expanding factory capacity and into new markets even before addressing the initial markets or validating that their factory can actually scale or that their product has been refined? They've only produced just over a thousand vehicles. It seems like Rivian has put its fingers in all of the pies and needs to juggle multiple things at once. Imagine Tesla tried to come out with the Model S, 3, X, and Y all at the same time. That would have been a disaster. But that seems to be Rivian's strategy. Rivian appears to have a lack of focus, but is moving at full speed ahead. While they're spending as quickly as possible, it's important to validate the product itself and supply chains, as well as making sure service centers and charging stations are thoroughly placed. These latter two were the top decision factors for people looking to buy a Tesla. It's not clear if Rivian has learned from Tesla's mistakes or successes. They say, ramping up a manufacturing facility and simultaneously launching multiple vehicles is an extremely complex task, 
but this is a core competency that we are building. Again, this is weird because Tesla took its time before trying to launch multiple products or building two factories at once. Elon Musk even recommended on Twitter to Rivian that they should get their first plant working. It's insanely difficult to reach volume production at affordable unit cost. Now Rivian's second plant is planned to cost $5 billion, including a battery and assembly plant, and will start construction mid-2022 with production expected in 2024. The factory has an expected capacity of 400,000 vehicles. But while Rivian is expanding at an incredible pace, their technology features may slow them down. For example, Rivian's vehicles make use of a skateboard architecture, something that Tesla has used as well for its vehicles. However, Tesla has now shifted beyond this to use a structural architecture where the battery pack itself makes up part of the vehicle structure. This requires close coordination among various engineering teams since everything in the vehicle becomes even more coupled together. However, the benefits allow for reduced weight, fewer components, and therefore significantly lower cost per vehicle. This makes a modular skateboard architecture much less relevant or competitive in the face of a highly vertically integrated structural design. One downside of moving so quickly brings to light something that Elon Musk has mentioned multiple times, which is that the factory is the product, not the vehicle. Rivian's trucks have many nuanced features which add complexity as we've seen with Tesla. They had problems bringing up the Model X since the Falcon wing doors added tremendous complexity, slowing down the original launch and ramp up of the vehicle. So adding factories early in the game, as Rivian is doing, actually makes it more difficult to change later and to adapt. For instance, if Rivian is building out a facility to produce electric skateboards that are quickly becoming non-competitive, this could be a negative side effect of trying to grow the company too quickly. And by the way, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. Now, of course, Rivian is just starting out, meaning that their volume is still low. However, their base model is priced to start near $68,000, and they plan to produce 25,000 vehicles this year. The pickup truck market in the US, which is the largest in the world, can easily digest this price and volume. And Rivian, for quite some time, will sell every car that they make, given that they will be taking share from the ICE industry. However, the stock appears to have priced in potential domination of the pickup truck industry, perhaps since Rivian was first to market. The value of the company has since fallen, but was much larger than Ford, the leader in pickup trucks. Yet we're seeing Ford itself bring its F-150 Lightning backed by a strong brand and starting at $40,000, and Tesla's Cybertruck will likely enter the market with production that surpasses both Ford and Rivian combined, which is also set to start at $40,000. Since the EV market is small relative to ICE, production means everything in terms of taking market share and building a loyal customer base. Rivian has no track record of scaling anything and may have trouble dominating the pickup truck market with a much more expensive vehicle that is produced in fewer units, as they are still in their early phases. Just a few weeks ago, Rivian attempted to raise its vehicle prices across the board, even on early reservation holders, by as much as $20,000, which caused major backlash and a wave of cancellations. According to informal polling, it appeared that up to 60% of reservation holders were planning to cancel their reservations. However, Rivian quickly backtracked and kept the original reservation pricing while only raising prices for new orders. Now, the entire industry has been raising prices due to increases in raw material prices and transportation costs causing major inflation. Tesla has raised their prices multiple times this year to keep up with rising costs, something that Tesla's CFO Zach Kirkhorn says he tries to forecast by matching incoming material costs with orders out into the future. Yet Tesla may run into a similar issue with its Cybertruck reservation holders unless they try to wait for commodity prices to return to Earth or change up the vehicle offering, something that may be quite likely if Tesla starts by offering a four-motor vehicle which was not part of the early reservations. But what's most shocking here is the number of people who moved to cancel their Rivian orders right away upon hearing the news of price hikes. This signals that perhaps most buyers are just looking at this vehicle for fun and don't actually need it for their work, for instance. Otherwise, they would have held through any increases if they actually needed the vehicle. 
there must be a number of other viable alternatives that already makes loyalty appear fragile for Rivian. And then there's the 5,000 pound gorilla in the room, which is Tesla's Cybertruck, which may look out of the ordinary, but is targeted directly at taking out the top selling brand, the Ford F-150, and aims to have more functionality than its rival on top of everything customers expect from a Tesla. Cybertruck's rugged, dent-proof, scratch-proof, bullet-proof design has led it to achieve potentially over 1 million pre-orders, showing extremely strong demand, even much higher than Ford's F-150 Lightning. And Tesla does have the track record for being able to scale EVs massively. Now Rivian is supposed to be targeting the adventure niche for which they offer camping accessories built into their vehicle. However, Rivian only has a small 4.5 foot truck bed which has some major disadvantages, especially for camping and for transporting goods. Tesla has not only targeted the 6.5 foot bed market, which is the same size as the top selling pickup truck in the world, but this is actually more suitable for camping and adventure, which is why Tesla showed off its camper mode and accessories, backed by software and patents for controlling accessories such as a stove for instance, through its touchscreen. It's possible that Tesla's truck fits Rivian's niche better than Rivian itself. Since Rivian's aforementioned mission statement seems to have pivoted to try to overlap with Tesla's mission of sustainable energy, they may not be able to defend their niche position, which in the face of long-term competition from Tesla could cause them to lose their core business. Tesla has also delayed the Cybertruck multiple times since they weren't ready with enough battery capacity for it. Yet somehow, players such as Ford, GM with a massive Hummer, and Rivian are able to find batteries. This isn't exactly true. It only works because their volumes are so low and will remain as such. These companies have not locked in battery supply, materials, and supplier components like Tesla has, which is the limiting factor for scaling. It's amazing that chip shortages slowed Rivian down and caused delays even though they only produced a thousand vehicles last year, while Tesla was somehow able to produce 936,000 vehicles facing the same industry shortages. When Cybertruck sales begin coming out of Tesla's newly built Giga Texas, Tesla has purposely been waiting for the battery supply to be there to coincide with the Cybertruck's launch, and so Tesla won't be the first to market, but when they enter, they will scale and surpass all of the other EV players as we've seen in all other markets that Tesla has expanded into so far with their Model 3 and Model Y offerings. Now Rivian IPO'd at $78 per share and hit an all-time high of $179 to date. However, since then, the company has been in decline, breaking below its IPO price and bouncing off a low of $33 per share. Rivian has about $20 per share in cash at the moment, and so the company has plenty of room to invest in many different areas and to try to grow as quickly as possible, which does put them in a much better position than Tesla was when they started. Rivian has a great advantage of being able to start from scratch and isn't tied to any of the problems of legacy auto, meaning they've built their vehicles from the ground up as opposed to shoehorning electric powertrains into inefficient gas car form factors. Rivian certainly has fans and they have tens of thousands of pre-orders and an excellent and lucrative adventure niche to go after and to dominate. However, investors have trusted the company with over $18 billion of their cash and they want to see a return on their capital. This has caused Rivian to take on other projects such as with Amazon and even deviate from their mission to simply go head to head against Tesla, a company that arguably has a 10 year lead in every aspect of electrification. This is reminiscent of trying to copy Apple, where competitors were years behind and got trampled by Apple's better technology, marketing, and better value even if their prices were higher. Many of the Apple copycats either downsized or no longer exist today since they had inferior products. Samsung, one of the few companies to stand up to Apple, didn't just spend billions, they spent tens of billions per year trying to catch up to Apple. And while today they do sell more phones than the leading giant, Apple still rakes in the majority of the industry's profits. Tesla's behaving similarly to Apple, however they're actually trying to hit all of the major market segments, not just the mid to high end, which makes them even more of a threat since their pricing is actually below that of Rivian's, but with highly refined technology. Going head on against the disruptive leader has historically not been a wise move, 
but if Rivian can remain differentiated and hit their scaling goals ahead of incumbent automakers, then they will likely be able to grow into their market valuation. So do you think that Rivian is poised to become another Tesla or will it remain a niche player? And regardless of that, can the company still cause havoc in the legacy ICE business by taking share from traditional OEMs that still rely on the dealership model? Don't forget to check out our NordVPN sponsor link in the description below. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.